The static mix is the first and most important part of the mixing process, but a lot of people completely skip it or at least don't give it the time and attention it deserves. If you're not familiar with the static mix, this is just where the only thing you're doing is setting your volume and pan positions. A lot of people, they just run straight from the recording process straight into mixing, but they haven't really made sure that they've set their individual levels at the appropriate levels relative to each other and relative to the headroom you need to keep at the top of your mix. And so then they're fighting against the headroom or fighting against the relative levels of everything in the mix to get the right things to cut through. They are basically shooting themselves in the foot before they even start mixing. And beyond that, if you haven't really set your individual volumes and your pan positions appropriately, then you don't really know what you need to be doing in the mix. Once you've set your volumes, you can kind of get into the mix and figure out where things are getting covered up and you might need to use EQ to help bring them out or to maybe remove something from something else so that everything can be clear and full and present in your mix or what kind of effects you want, what levels those effects should be. If you haven't set your individual volumes at the levels that they should be, then all you're doing is individually processing tracks kind of randomly. You might get your kick drum to sound great on its own. You might get your acoustic guitar to sound great on its own, your vocals to sound great on its own. But when you put everything together, it doesn't actually work together because you just worked on them individually. Getting your static mix set first allows you to jump into your mix and really figure out where those issues are and then address those as opposed to just randomly making individual elements in solo sound better, but not everything sound better altogether. So the static mix is incredibly important and it's something that you need to put your time and attention to. And in today's video, we're gonna go through an entire static mix together so you can see exactly how to do it. This is the first video in a six part series where we're mixing a song live together. I'm gonna go through everything where you can watch over my shoulder and and see how I go through this process. And if you don't know what I'm talking about at all, then definitely go check out this video I'll link to above here where I walk through the six steps to a pro mix inside Logic and you'll understand how all of these pieces go together. Today we're doing the static mix, which is the first step. In the second step, we'll do some top-down mixing or master track processing as I call it. In the third video, we'll start EQing individual channels. Fourth video, we'll compress individual channels. Fifth video, we'll start adding some effects. And then finally in the sixth video, we'll do a little bit of automation to fine tune everything to be exactly the way we want it to be. And before we even get into it, I wanna give you something. I've put together all these steps in an easy to follow checklist. It's a six step checklist to a pro mix from the link in the description below. If you just go through it, it just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have that we'll be doing throughout the series. So the next time you're mixing, you can just pull that up and easily quickly reference it so you don't have to keep coming back to these videos. Okay, let's go and jump into Logic and start on the static mix. Now, before we start the static mix, there's three things we need to do. The first is remove any pre-mixing that's not part of the sound. So if you pulled up a preset while you're recording vocals or just to kind of get a quick feel for the mix, take all that stuff off. You don't want anything that's not crucial to the sound of the source. So you can see in my session here, we basically have no processing going on. I'm not sending off to any effects. It's very, very basic. And that's important because we want as much clarity and as few things going on during this part of the mixing process as we can get. So all you really should have is something that's part of the sound. So obviously like an amp on a guitar track, we're going to keep that stuff on. So if it's not part of the sound, take it off. We want to go as raw as we can, and that's going to give us the clarity to know what we need to do in the mix as we get further into the mixing process. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that we want to set a level meter on our master track or stereo output as Logic calls calls it in default. We're just gonna go over here down to metering and find the level meter. And I like to set it as the last plugin on this track so that I can put processing before it later in this process. And then what I like to do is just turn it vertical and then pop it up in the top right corner. And then I just keep it up the whole time that I'm mixing. That way, no matter where I am in the session, I can see the exact volume of my output on the master track. Now, we wanna keep this between negative six to negative three. Digital zero is a point that if sound goes past it, it just gets cut off. So we need to keep that proper headroom to make sure that we're not having our signal cut off. And if we need to turn up anything later on in the mixing process, we're like, oh man, that vocal still isn't cutting through as much as I'd like for it to. I just need to bring it up a little bit. We have the space, that headroom to do that. Okay. Crucial, crucial part of this process. And then the third and final thing, and I know you're gonna resist this because I did for years, I just didn't do it for years, and it definitely held my mixes back, is we wanna bring all our volumes all the way down. We wanna start fresh and bring things in with intention, paying attention to the exact thing that we're pulling up the volume of and where it's living inside the mix. So in Logic, this is very simple to do. Uh, first thing you need to do is if you have any sort of folders, track stacks like this Logic Producer kit here, you need to fold it open so that you can see all those tracks. And then we wanna not select the track stack itself, but select all the tracks within it and then all the other tracks in your session. 
and I'm just gonna hold shift on the keyboard to pull all the way over to the end and now I've selected every track. And then we wanna hold option on the keyboard and click on the faders and that's gonna put them all at zero. And then we can bring everything down together so that everything comes down evenly. Otherwise it will keep the same relative volumes if you bring up multiple tracks at once, which can just throw things off and kind of throw you off later in the process. So hold option as you click on a fader, bring them all back up to unison and then bring them all down. I know it's scary, but we did it together. And then the next thing we need to do is put any pan positions that you're not 100% sure on back to zero and we wanna set them intentionally inside the mix. So in this case, all these vocals here at the end, we recorded them with the intention of where they're gonna live in the mix. So I'm gonna leave those as they are. But like these two vocals here, I'm not exactly sure if that's where I want those to live. So I'm gonna hold option and click on the pan knob and it's gonna put them back up to center. And then let's look at it this view actually. I think the sense here might pan further, they might pan narrower, so I'll, I'll play with that as well. And I think that's it. I know where my toms are gonna live, I want them like that, the hi-hat off to the side. So that's it. Okay, so now everything is basically fresh and now it's time to start the static mix. So I'm gonna throw my headphones on. With the static mix, as I said, we wanna keep negative six to negative three headroom at the top of our mix. And you wanna bring in the most important things in the mix first, which for most pop and rock songs, your vocal, your kick and your snare. And then if you have a lead synth or lead like guitar line that is really important, you wanna go ahead and bring that in as well. For us here, it's just gonna be the lead vocal, the kick and the snare. And you wanna make sure that you're doing this in the loudest section of the song. So in this case, we're in this kind of big bridge area. This is technically the loudest section of the song, but typically it's gonna be your last chorus or your last part of the bridge. That's gonna be your loudest area. So somewhere near the end of the song in most songs. Okay, we've set that to loop. Now I'm gonna let it play. I'm gonna go back to the lead vocal here and bring Baby it up to unison. And then I'm gonna go up to the drums Baby and start bringing in the kick and the snare. Call for you bring this down a little bit baby it is at all bring up the snare top baby, and bottom it is at all baby we're not on call it's feeling you. pretty good but notice that we're already at negative 3.6 and i only have basically three elements in kick snare and vocal so i'm going to select all these tracks here the kick snare and uh the vocal down here and we're just gonna bring it down right now, the vocal's at zero, so I'm just gonna bring it down three decibels, so it's negative three, and that will give me somewhere around negative six. Baby, we're not on so again, call. now we're in a nice safe level over baby, here. Let's go and bring in the overheads. Baby, we're not on call for you. The tom here, the low tom. Baby, it is Let's go to a section that has a little more toms on it. Now you're saying you're proud, yeah, you're saying you're proud. I kind of like loud toms personally. We're all getting sick of it, yeah. Let's go back to that section. Proud, yeah, you're drum room. You're proud. Drum room is We're a huge part of the drum mix. Of it, yeah. Let's bring up this grit track here. Cool. Let's go to that louder section at the end. Baby, Those drums feel good to me. I like the sound of that. Baby, the grit track is adding a lot. Let's go and uh, bring in this tambourine real quick. Let's bring in this bass bomb. Baby, it's just like a sub hit. Let's do that one more time. Baby, cool. And we're still safe on our meter there. And then let's bring in this digital drum. Baby, And then from there, we're gonna bring in our bass sources, our mid-range sources, and then the rest of the vocals. That's the way I like to work. So, bass. Still good on a peak level. A little loud, bring it down a little bit. Get the synth bass here. It's a fun little trick. I've recorded this already, and I wanted it to go up an octave, but I hadn't recorded it that way. This is an old track. And so when I was producing it later, I was like, it would be cool if it went up an octave. What if I use a whammy pedal to give it that slide effect? Anyway. Baby, so this guitar is going to be center. Kind of want it to be tucked a little bit. Baby, guitar left and right. 
Let's see if these are sitting equal. So in solo, I just want to be seeing if my level looks like it's leaning a little bit to the right. The right ear's a little bit louder. So I'm gonna just like one track, bring the left up till it's sitting equal. You want to balance both looking at it visually and also listening to make sure that it looks right. But you don't want to have things start to lean off to one side if you can avoid it. That's how you're gonna have a nice even feeling mix left to right. relative levels. Cool. Let's go to a section that has this little guitar lead tails. This is from an old demo and just sounded cool, blended in with the lead, the new lead. over negative six it's still totally fine let's go and bring in this piano here cool. and then let's bring in this left and right element here these are meant to be kind of balanced against each other. Pin left, right. Looks like we're a little bit louder on the left, so I'm just gonna bring the right up a little bit. I'm okay if it's leaning a little bit. I want it to be fairly balanced. It feels pretty good to me. A little loud. Bit. Turn that tambourine down just a little bit. Just bring this vocal double. Let's listen to another area with the vocal double. Instead of crying at the table, instead of giving out the names. Feels pretty good. It's supposed to be kind of an obvious double. With this left and right vocal here. Let's pull these up. Check where they come in the bridge here. That goes away. Let's make sure they're good in solo, left and right. Cool. Let's bring in the lead vocal. And this low. Let's context. This is kind of a cool, this is recorded like from the other side of the room, so it kind of has a bit of a room sound. Let's try putting it off to the right just a little bit. Yeah. I think that helps it stand out, cuts a little bit better. Not down at all. Helps separate it from the lead vocal. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And then down here, we have the chorus vocals. So we're going to do these in solo. I'm going to bring up the lead vocal. What I want to do is get a good balance across all of these, and then I can adjust their level up or down in the mix. So, But get the balance relative to each other in solo. We have a left and right here. Bring those up together. Let's go back here. Feels pretty good. Let's go and bring in these here. This is again kind of like that far room sound. So he's singing at the wall faced away from the microphone to give it a sense of space. Go and solo these all together again. 
a couple of harmonies here. Let's bring these up. And then this left and right here. One more time. I think that left is a little bit louder. good to me. Okay, let's listen to the context now. A little bit hot in general. Can you select all of them? Bring them down just a little bit. I actually really want that lead guitar line to be kind of equally prominent to the vocal line. Alright, and the final thing here is... I kind of want this one to feel far away, so I want it to be lower in the mix. Quieter gives us a sensation or perspective uh, that it is further away. So let's check that out. Okay, now it uh, looks like we just have some synth elements. Let's go and bring these in here. If you're ever not sure if something is at the right volume, try muting it and seeing if you notice it disappear. Something like that that's kind of supposed to be tucked, but we definitely still want to be getting kind of that fullness from that synth. It's a little hard to hear, like notice it in the context of the mix, but by muting it, it kind of becomes obvious that it's gone. Cool, all right. You can see here we're at negative 4.4, so we're still in that safe range, negative three to negative six. But let's say you got a little bit past, let's say you're at negative one, uh, you hadn't hit digital zero yet. You could bring this entire mix down without grabbing every fader by going to the top here, going to utility, adding just a gain plugin, and then just bringing this down here by a couple of decibels. In our case, we're safe where we are, so I'm gonna go and take that off. But that is something that's an option if you need to bring the entire mix down a little bit. You don't have to grab every track and bring them all down. Although you can, again, just by grabbing this track and going all the way back to the beginning, selecting this track and just bringing them all down together very, very subtly, very gently. The idea with the static mix is that you're just massaging everything into place until it feels really good, feels like you want it to. How do you know when you're done? Well, one, you'd wanna listen through the entire mix, so I'm gonna do that before I move on, but I won't do that with you just for sake of your time. But I listen through the entire mix and make sure that it feels right at the different areas in the song. And it's okay if it's maybe a little quiet here, a little loud there, as long as the overall feels really good, uh, because we're gonna automate some stuff at the very end and compression's gonna help address some of those disparities in volume. But you want it to feel good throughout the song and you kinda wanna be like moving along to it. You wanna be enjoying the mix without all the fluff. You're just kind of feeling everything, you're hearing everything, and you it feels like the song that you tried to create. As long as you've done that, then you've done a good job creating this mix. So before you go, be sure to grab the six step checklist to a, a pro mix. It's really gonna help you out just going through these six steps that we're going through in the series, but you can reference back to it really quickly anytime you're working on a, your music. So you don't have to keep coming back to these videos. It's free from the link in the description below, so be sure to pick it up. If you found this video helpful and you think other people would like it as well, be sure to like this video so that more people will find this video. And and I'd always love to hear from you. Is there anything from this that you're going to try in your mixing process? Any little tricks or things that you saw me do or that I mentioned that you think will be helpful to you? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next week when we're doing some top-down mixing. One thing at a time, I can only